to Playbook for Performance, the official podcast of Shauna Corden, the Joan of Arc for corporate healing and performance. Join the quest to make work fun again by preparing leadership for engaging workplaces. And now, your host. Hello and welcome, friends. I'm Shauna Corden, and I'm glad to have you here on the Playbook for Performance podcast. Our mission is to make work fun again by building better leaders. Last week, we talked about compassion, starting with curiosity. And on our social media, we also added a few more tools, like an article on compassion versus empathy. If you have additional tools you'd like to suggest, email us and we can add them to the epilogue by dropping a note to podcast at seanacorden.com. Now on to today. In keeping up with our theme of the self-aware leader, I want to talk about the unique challenges of leadership, especially executive leadership. One of the most often cited benefits of working with an executive coach is a partner. This is a partner that doesn't judge and is aligned with your goals. This is a natural part of the coaching equation. Coaches don't have our own agendas. We sign up to help our clients achieve theirs. Clients cite me as their safe space, where they can think out loud and not worry about the ramifications of their statements. Often, when subordinates hear a leader think out loud, they just go and make it happen, as if that wondering aloud was a command. Subordinates are also affected by the decisions leaders make, and so they listen with that angle of, what's in it for me? One area where I might challenge a leader is if I think they have a blind spot or I want to keep them accountable to their goals. Generally, I'm working with them. I'm using their vocabulary, analogies, and keeping on their pace. However, if I feel something isn't quite right, I may delicately choose to break that rapport, be a bit provocative, challenge. This is where that famous Dr. Phil quote comes in, where his guests have probably made a few poor decisions, and he mirrors it back to them by asking, and how's that working for you? This is part of my job as a partner and an ally. My clients need to trust that I'm challenging them for a better result to keep them honest or reflect something that they may be considering that I don't see as in alignment with who they are. As I talked last week about curiosity, I'm trying to be aware of all my biases, voice them if necessary, and help the client with their agenda. It's not about me separating myself from my clients and judging them. I want to hold their values up to them and ensure that they are integrity, whole. All of us need allies. We all need accountability. Whether it's the bathroom scale, your yearly doctor's wellness visit, or a coach, We all need someone to help us be the person we can be, especially when it may be tempting to relax a little. There are some famous accountability partners in history, part competitor, part ally. These are the people who make us better. Every great athlete, politician, inventor, magnate had somebody keeping them on the path. How can you create this for yourself? And exactly what do you want to be held accountable for? For execs, I recommend the coach partner as your ally. This is someone who only has your agenda and the topics are confidential. Depending on your field, you may have a fellow practitioner who's in a different company or market segment or even a spiritual advisor, a great friend. But you need to ensure two things out of the accountability partner you choose. Number one, they have your back. Number two, they'll call you on your antics when you're out of line and you'll know it and respect it. Are you a leader that needs greater self-awareness, an ally to keep you accountable? I work with clients one-on-one to increase their awareness and build trust between themselves and others. The content of our conversations are always confidential. It's part of the coaching code of ethics. Let's do a chemistry check and see if we're a good fit. Email me to set up a time, shauna at shaunacordon.com. So let's talk about the tool of the week. 
the accountability question list. Marshall Goldsmith introduced this topic to me years ago, and I have been fascinated ever since. He created a list of questions that when he answered in the affirmative meant he was living his daily life in a way that ensured he was on track in the short term and the long term. He was embodying his values. They were questions that ensured he was loving his family as he wished, keeping up with his health, and so on. Each day he met with his partner and the partner asked him his list of questions and Marshall asked his partner his list. Now, for those of you who know Marshall Goldsmith, he is a very busy man. He could have said, yeah, I'll do this once a week, but he chose to do this daily. It was that important. So what are the 10 or 20 questions that when you answer them affirmatively would ensure that you're on track? So here's your field work, because coaching without action isn't coaching, it's just entertainment. Spend some time brainstorming these questions. And notice how tightly they need to be worded to be on track. For example, it's not enough to have your accountability partner ask you, did you weigh yourself today? But it would be something more like, did you weigh your goal weight of XYZ? I would love to hear some of your questions. And with your permission, I'll share. And if you prefer, keep your identity anonymous. Each week in the podcast, I like to highlight a leader doing it well in the news or from a listener, and one that had a wobble. And if you'd like to nominate your organization, please email me at podcast at shawnacordon.com. My applause this week goes to the several clients I've heard from who are eager to get teams back together for offsite planning. They're taking controlled and prepared measures to ensure they set a strong foundation for their teams. I've already booked several DISC workshops in the new year, all around the intent of improving communication and understanding one another's preferences and tendencies. We all want a fun place to work. And great leaders find out the preferences and tendencies of their subordinates so they can communicate better. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, give us a rating, tell your friends. If you'd like to hear more about a topic that would make your work fun by improving the leaders in your organization, please drop us a line at podcast at shawnacordon.com. Until next week, take good care. Thank you for listening to Playbook for Performance. To learn more about Shauna Corden, her consulting programs and tools, please visit her website at shawnacorden.com and follow us on social media at Shauna Corden. Yeah.